Ladies and gentlemen, here to play our national anthem, the Navy Band Northwest. Color Guard, retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Dan Arnell. I'm the chairperson for our Commands Incentive Awards Committee. And joining me, this dapper gentleman, is our executive officer of PSNS and IMF, Commander Brandon Johnson. We are honored to be your masters of ceremony today. It is our, it is our pleasure to welcome our nominees to the 32nd Annual Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility Employee of the Year Award Ceremony. We are happy to be able to welcome families and guests in person today, and want to also welcome families, guests, supervisors, and coworkers who will be joining us via video feed. Today, we will be honoring the commands 2023 Junior Sale of the Year and Senior Sale of the Year, and all of our civilian employees of the year. Our Incentive Awards Committee had another year of tough decisions as they reviewed the amazing accomplishments of our nominees and completed the arduous task of selecting our award winners. Members from the committee, will you please stand and be recognized? Thank you, community members. We would also like to thank Code 1102 Awards Department for completing the ceremony preparations and Code 1160 Public Affairs for organizing our live stream video effects. Let's give them all a round of applause as well. We would also like to introduce the magic voice you'll hear from behind the curtain once again, Mr. Mike Wellborn. Good afternoon, Bremerton. Thanks, Mike. Out of 12,654 employees in our command, our departments and trades have chosen 235 employees who represent the very best of the best in their respective organizations. All employees nominated today should be very proud of their accomplishments. Let's begin our ceremony today with some opening remarks. I am honored to introduce Commander of Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility, Captain J.D. Crinklaw. Thank you, XO. Good afternoon, Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and Inter Intermediate Maintenance Facility, families and guests. I am honored to be here celebrating our Employee of the Year winners and nominees. First, I would like to begin by expressing my profound gratitude to our Incentive Awards Committee and the Awards Department team. Their unwavering dedication and tireless efforts have once again produced a remarkable event that not only honors our distinguished nominees, but also fortifies the bonds across our command. This ceremony underscores our commitment to putting people first, celebrating not only the professional excellence of our team members, 
but also their invaluable contributions to fostering a supportive and united community within our command. A special thanks to the Admiral Theater for welcoming us back. Your partnerships helps preserve this tra cherished tradition, making it possible for us to gather and celebrate in such a historic setting. This year, we have the privilege of recognizing 234 outstanding nominees. Each of you represents the pinnacle of commitment and excellence that defines our workforce. Your daily efforts ensure that our Navy remains a formidable presence, capable of, capable of meeting today's challenges and seizing tomorrow's opportunities. Today is about you, the engineers, the technicians, the artisans, and every role in between. Whether you are a newcomer or a seasoned veteran, whether you impact our mission from within your department or by serving the broader community, your contributions are vital. You are the backbone of our readiness and the spirit of our Navy. I know that this isn't always and hasn't always been easy for us, and it definitely hasn't always been a bright, sunny day. But let's be honest, we do live in the Pacific Northwest. Admittedly, we sometimes have to spend time in that dark, rainy February, but thankfully, with a little help from each other, we will continue to pluck away some of these pesky problems and make it back to the warm summer days of June, or July, or ship refitting, repairing. Um, in a place we focus so much on self-assessment, I obviously need to work on my metaphors. I am proud to say we have risen to meet challenges that have come our way. For example, as a command, we have recently undertaken significant upgrades to our dry docks a critical step in preserving these vital assets for future generations. This initiative exemplifies how we have come together as a shipyard, uniting as one cohesive team to strengthen our infrastructure and enhance our operational capabilities. The teamwork displayed during this period has been nothing short of inspirational. Furthermore, our collaboration with the community on this project has not only bolstered local support but it also integrated valuable external insights into our operations. Recent remarks from the Secretary of the Navy during a congressional hearing underscored his pride in these efforts, highlighting our commitment to excellence both within our gates and in our broader community engagements. In the face of both internal and external challenges, including those beyond our control, your commitment has never wavered. You have consistently stepped up, combining brilliant minds and skilled hands to close gaps in our ship availability timelines. We have a lot more to do in this regard, but I want to recognize that your dedication often meant extended hours and minimal time between projects, yet you met each call with resolve and professionalism. I know the sacrifices this has entailed, and your efforts are deeply appreciated. Additionally, we continue to face hiring, recruitment, and retention challenges. This is not a secret, but a fact that affects us all, and we take this seriously. I want you to know that I recognize that our shortcomings on this front have required many of you to shoulder multiple roles or juggle several projects simultaneously. Just because you have the dedication and excellence to meet this challenge, and you have, it doesn't mean you should have to. I see the hard work and commitment each of you brings daily and I want you to know that I am actively working with our command leaders to try to create more breathing room where possible. Is there a little skepticism there? I did say try. You have my word and commitment on that. I am dedicated to transforming our shipyard into not just a workplace where you can perform effectively, but also a nurturing ground where you can grow and envision a sustainable long-term career. However, shaping this thriving environment is not a task that I can accomplish alone. It requires every single one of us to actively engage and contribute. Together, we can foster our culture that not only celebrates our achievements, but also continuously inspires and supports one another. With this collective effort, each year, when we gather to celebrate our achievements like we are today, it will be with an even greater sense of encouragement, inspiring you to reach the heights your colleagues have achieved. 
Today's ceremony is testament to your resilience and capability. Despite the hurdles, you continue to rise and demonstrate that there is always room for excellence and dedication for our mission. This celebration reflects our collective commitment to excellence and the enduring spirit of our workforce, proving that no challenge is too great for our team. I am privileged to work alongside you and extend my personal appreciation for the support you provide to our command and our mission. Your efforts are what make America's Navy the most powerful in the world, and we are fortunate to have each of you on our team. Congratulations to all the nominees and winners. You have truly earned this recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. We will have a group photos of all the nominees and winners immediately after the ceremony up here on stage. I would ask that everybody remain uh, here for that photo opportunity. As in the past categories with 15 nominees or more, we'll have two employees selected as employee of the year. I would like to ask all nominees to please come forward and on stage using the stairs to my left as your name is announced. Please stand on the taped area in front of the curtain until the winner or winners are announced. I would also ask that the audience hold your applause until the end of all of the nominees being uh, announced uh, as it may interfere with hearing the next nominee's name. Once the employee of the year is announced, all nominees, please exit the stage to my right. I want to thank everyone in advance for being courteous. And let's get started. All right, presenting our military recognitions this afternoon, Master Diver James O'Halleck. Need the glasses. <clears throat> Good morning, PSNS family and friends. It is my honor to introduce the Junior Sailor and Sailor of the Year for fiscal year 2023. Both of these individuals already received their award, but I wanted to recognize them today for their outstanding professionalism and dedication to PSNS. 2023 Junior Sailor of the Year, MMN2 Tarpley, please come to stage. MMN2 Tarpley serves as a lead chemist for Banger to ensure pure water meets grade A requirements for reactor plant use. During his time as LELT, Tarpley has led to qualify nine new pure water chemists. He performed 17 check chemistries on different analysis to ensure procedures were performed verbatim, becoming the only E5 to hold this position of lead chemist at Banger. As a pure chemist, MMN2 Tarpley noted a required maintenance for a conduct meter that is previously unaware of. This finding initiated change from both Banger and Bremerton. As LELT, he initiated a revision to NRMD to ensure the manual meets the new requirements of water chemistry and the standards put forth. As a RCT, he performed 60 weeks of arrivals and routine surveys and stood 200 hours of control point area watch. These are only a few of his requirements that met him for 2023 Junior Sailor of the Year. Andy One Lufbro, please join on stage. Andy one Lupro also is a top five finalist for NAVC Sailor of the Year. As a leading petty officer, Andy one Lupro delivers forged deck plate leadership to a diverse group of 13 Navy divers, cultivating an environment of opportunity and enabling remarkable professional growth, teamwork, and achievement among his sailors. His mentorship led to all six eligible sailors advancing, one Sailor of the Quarter, three Junior Sailors of the Quarter, and a release the re-enlistment of all eligible sailors on his team. Eight naval awards and medals from external commands were given during his tenure. As a senior diving supervisor, 
ND1 maintains a current working knowledge of all diving instructions, notices, policies, and directives, and leads his team through arduous and challenging operations. He is responsible for the proper execution of all quality assurance, formal work packages associated with each repair task. He briefs job-specific risk assessments and makes required notifications or obtains necessary permissions prior to commencing diving operations. He's also responsible for $1.75 million in applicable, I'm sorry, intricate divers life support systems and ancillary equipment. Anyone Luf Bro's experience and in-rate knowledge are constantly sought out and eagerly sought by superiors, peers, and subordinates. He is a true mentor who seems to genuinely enjoy developing those around him. He performed 27 hours of classroom and 63 hours of on-hand training, developing four dive supervisors, chamber supervisors, inside tenders, and six divers life support operators. One more notable thing is he is the sole responsible individual for raising up the 27-foot work boat that sank over in Banger Dive Locker. Presenting the first civilian category this afternoon, Code 1100, Ms. Jennifer Herbig. Good afternoon. I have the honor today to present the Employee of the Year category of Administrative, Clerical, and Support Services, GS-10 or equivalent and below. Secretary Clerk, Assistant in Personnel, Library or Data, Supply, Financial, Analyst, Specialist, Program Manager, Coordinator in Administrative, Security, Safety, Kitting, and Training. And the nominees are Riley Averett, Code 2350. Melissa Berglund, Code 1102. Casey Estrabor, Code 900A. Brandon Gregorio, code 900T. Rodolfo Lozares, shop 26. Christina Mann, code 101. Jessica Peel, shop 71. Tamara Wojcik, code 2340. And Hannah Wright, shop 17. May I have the envelope, please? I've always wanted to say that. And the employee of the year goes to Casey Estrabor. Casey Estrebor is a wonderful asset to the Waterfront Support Team, as well as an integral member of the USS Jimmy Carter Project Team. Casey took the time to train personnel while never overlooking the needs of her primary project team. Her ability to solve problems has eased rising tensions across all parties and helped to improve morale. We are very lucky to have Casey on our team. Her work ethic and team support is admirable. Thank you. Our next category presenter is our Assistant Supply Officer, Commander Shannon Percival, and Code 107 Office of Counsel, Ms. Wendy Kelly. Good afternoon. 
We have the honor to present the Administrative and Support Services Waterfront GS11 or equivalent and above, Analyst, Specialist, Safety, Kitting, Training Production Instructor, Production Shop Planner. Isn't that fun? An amazing uh, set. I can't believe how hard it would be for to choose somebody from this. But our first person is Trisha Bartlett, code 980S.1. Gary Best, code 106. I see people, good. Christine Byrne, code 300. Tegan Clark, shop 11. Jamie Corsell, code 980.5. Lindsay Fine, shop 38. Charles Fletcher, shop 71. Andrew Keller, code 1200N. That, that sounds like that's it, but it's not. <laughs> Indries Manning, code 900S. John Rains, code 136. Kristen Reed, code 308, 308. <laughs> and now this one, Maria Viana, code 520. And that is. And the winner is Maria Viana, Code 520. Maria was a major contributor to the success of the USS Ohio availability. Maria was responsible for expediting and resolving over 7,400 requisitions during 2023, which ensured uninterrupted material support at the project's planned key events and milestones. Due to her extraordinary level of experience and knowledge, she was selected and assigned to the project's Operations Control Center, a major initiative as part of the Naval Sustainment Systems Shipyard. The purpose of this group is to quickly resolve work stoppages, affecting critical and controlling path work. Maria is one team, one fight, personified, and second to none. Presenting our next category is the USS Nimitz Military Deputy Project Superintendent, Lieutenant Commander Tony DiMartino, and the Code 1101 Deputy Director of Executive Services, Mr. Jim Cook. It is our honor to present the award to the Administrative and Support Services Non-Waterfront GS-11 or equivalent and above for Financial Analyst, Specialist, Security, Administrative, and Training Program Manager. And the nominees are Heidi Anderson, Code 1182. Carla Berg, Code 120W. Nancy Byer, Shop 31. Kelly Caldwell, Code 105.3. Gerald Crawford, Code 109.4. Justin Critchfield, Shop 71. 
Miles Dennis, code 600. Gabriel Emily, shop 84. Sean Gardner, code 109.1. Sarah Green, code 1102. Melanie Hart, shop 38. Dennis Hugaris, code 109.3. Donald Hornall, code 300. Darlene Manise, code 101. Eric Mashenko, code 300N. Mark Mitsui, code 702. Michelle Oxford, code 122. Mikal Penee, code 1221. Jonathan Peterson, code 280. Melissa Richardson, code 2350. Tammy Savage, code 1211. Lee Shellhammer, code 132. And last but not least, Melinda Swansboro, code 220. And the first award goes to Miles Dennis. In 2023, Mr. Dennis spearheaded multiple initiatives within the Comptroller Department to streamline and automate processes, saving over 2,000 hours of effort related to property accountability and audit readiness. Miles' innovative approach in overcoming professional challenges set a benchmark for others to follow. His pioneering use of innovative solutions is a notable example for his peers and leadership alike, and represents a paradigm shift in how tasks are approached and executed within the department. And the second winner is Eric Mishenko. Mr. Mishenko has made tremendous contributions to P.S. Sinis and IMF Detachment Yokosuka in 2023. Eric has improved the quantity and quality of training and has spearheaded many emergency response improvements most notably developing a response plan that allows for temporary shielding to be delivered in under an hour. He has also significantly improved many aspects of the training processes at that attachment, including overhauling the new employee orientation training, which now allows new hires to complete the orientation without requiring travel. He has also collaborated to deliver virtual qualification training for detachment employees. This paradigm shift saves government spending and has a positive impact on the detachment's ability to execute their workload. Presenting our next category, Code 105 Director of Radiological Controls, Mr. Matt Cushy. Uh, I've been using spring to work on my announcing voice. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure uh, to, to read off uh, the Administrative Managerial or Supervisory Non-Engineering, Non-Trade uh, Award. Supervisory or managerial position overseeing employees in areas such as personnel, executive support, security, computer services, procurement, resource managers providing leadership to those in an office atmosphere, not performing work directly supporting engineering or performing work on a waterfront project. Okay, 
The nominees are Amanda Bale, Code 701. Nicholas Bishop, Code 122. Troy Cox, Code 760. Brandon DeLay, Code 1223. Alexander Rosen, Code 900T. Kyle Shees, Code 109.1. Shane Scheibner, Code 377. And our illustrious announcer, Mr. Wellborn, Code 105.4. And the winner is Mr. Troy Cox. In 2023, as a work leader in Code 760, Troy Cox oversaw the successful executed 13 reentry controls in support of six flyaway dive systems under the PSNS and Bremerton Dive Locker Cognizance. In December 2023, Troy led a dive team in response to an emergent repair on the USS Carl Vinson while deployed in the 7th Fleet area of operations. In less than 16 hours, Troy and his team developed a plan and flew to meet the ship, only to find their equipment did not make the journey. By chance, other Navy divers in country were able to assist with equipment and with Troy's technical expertise, steadfast dedication, and superior problem-solving skills, he led the dive team to a successful replacement of the damaged valve, allowing the ship to resume their deployment on time. Presenting our next category, Code 730 Crane Maintenance Division Head, Mr. Sean Trask. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be announcing the following names for Employee of the Year in the category of Trades and Crafts, Structural, WG6 and above. From Shop 11, Jeremy Boyd. Shop 26, Corey Campbell. And from Shop 17, Olivia Mosbach. And the winner is Olivia Mosbach. Olivia Mosbach was instrumental in the success of RXA project work performed by Shop 1117 at Dry Docks 1 and 5, as well as the decommissioning of the refueling complex at Dry Dock 4. Her planning and preparation saved approximately 20% of the labor per vent removal. She worked by evaluating her jobs and working with engineering to update waste disposal directions to allow for more efficient execution and reduce the risks involved with the work. As a testament to Olivia's planning and communication skills, no problems arose during execution and waste shipments always finished on time or ahead of schedule. Through cultivating great relationships with engineering and other trades to taking the time to ensure first time quality, Olivia and her team performed flawlessly throughout 2023 Thank you for all that you do, Olivia. Presenting our next category, USS Theodore Roosevelt Project Superintendent, Mr. Brian McDermott. Good afternoon. I have the distinct honor of presenting the Employee of the Year Award for Trades and Crafts Mechanical, Non-Supervisory, WG6, and above. This award includes inside machinists, toolmakers, and electroplaters from Shop 31, outside machinists from Shop 38, pipe fitters from Shop 56, piping insulators from Shop 57, pipe fitters from Shop 99, Crane inspectors, test directors, quality assurance, and, tra and training personnel from Code 720, 
and maintenance personnel from Code 730. And the nominees are Russell Berg, Shop 99. Casey Brown, Shop 57. Robert Calixterio, Code 723. Nathan Hart, Shop 31. Bryce Klatt, Shop 56. Samuel Perone, Code 734. Stephanie Ream, Shop 38. And Tyler Zolman, Shop 38. All right, have the envelope, please. And the winner is Nathan Hart. Nathan spearheaded several improvements within the rubber division, namely studying the effects of rubber curing, reducing the production time by more than half, and making the material far more predictable. Additionally, Nathan coordinated with Code 260M and NSSSY to reevaluate and rewrite the rubber grommet standard to suit manufacturing needs within current processes. The rewrite is expected to be published in late 2024. His dedication towards improvement for the work center, coupled with his drive to better himself and his coworkers, has shown through his efforts in process improvement. His support and development of his coworkers in their training and his flexibility for supervisory roles needed at a moment's notice. Presenting our next category, Dive Locker Leading Chief Petty Officer, James Carlson, and Shop 99 Temporary Services Superintendent, Mr. Hans Jorsted. It is our honor to announce the award for Trades and Crafts Electrical Non-Supervisor WG6 and above for electronics mechanic, electrician, temporary service electrician, calibration, code 720 and 730 electricians. And the nominees are Scott Ballantyne, Shop 51, Jessica Lowe, Shop 67, and Nicholas Mulliman, Shop 06. is Scott Ballantyne, Shop 51. Scott Ballantyne is a work leader in the Circuit Breaker Depot, where there has been a shortage of experienced mechanics. Scott took seven unqualified junior mechanics under his wing to develop the next generation of breaker mechanics. Four of the seven mechanics are now ready to be qualified themselves due to Scott's significant investment in them. He is a strong leader who leads with humility and is excellent at motivating his crew. Last December, two circuit breakers in the shop were received in the closed position, which poses a risk of significant injury if the breaker had opened on someone's hand or finger. Scott noticed it immediately and alerted other mechanics in the area and his supervision. This resulted in a thorough investigation, which led to developing a new process with Shop 51 and Ship's Force to prevent this from happening again. Thanks for what you do, Scott. Presenting our next category is the Shop 06 Machine Maintenance and Tool Superintendent, Mr. Dave Bieber. Good afternoon. It's my honor to uh, present the Shop, uh, the Trade and Craft Service Non Supervisory WG6 and Above Central Tool Shipwrights 
composite plastic fabricators, fabric worker, dismantlers, painters, blaster, tile setter, temporary services, production engineering and facilities, crane operator, and diver. And the nominees are William Bryan, Shop 64. Natalie Hagstrom, Code 740. Tony Heisler, Shop 06. Kevin Constadius, Shop 75. Timothy Kugler, Shop 99. John Alin Penalosa, Code 2305. And Angela Russ, Shop 71. And the winner is Natalie Hagstrom. During Natalie Hagstrom's tenure in Code 740's CTD program, her innovative approach to streamline process resulted in substantial reductions in downtime and a surge in new hire training success rates from 56% to an impressive 93% in 2023. Natalie's leadership and ingenuity has revolutionized Code 740's approach to hiring, training, and development, leading to substantial cost savings realized from reduced training man hours. Beyond the call of duty, Natalie engages in mentoring journeymen, consistently invests in learning new skill sets, and takes on additional responsibilities, demonstrating her capacity for effective leadership. Natalie's impact resonates across the entire swing shift of Code 700 and throughout PSNS with her unwavering positive attitude and multifaceted contributions embodying the spirit of excellence and innovation that defines the true employee of the year. Presenting our next category, Shops 11 and 17 Ship Fitters, Sheet Metal, Nuclear Director, Mr. Chris Strader. Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm proud to announce the award for uh, Trades and Structural WG5 and Below Non Supervisory for Shop 11, 17, and 26. The nominees are Alex Pettigrove, Shop 11. Ethan Snook, Shop 26. Ethan Snook. Ethan has easily exceeded his share of the work and undertook more challenging tasks than one would expect from someone in his position. Ethan routinely took on complex and critical job assignments, including work with the elevated non-destructive tests. During his time they spent in San Diego on the Theodore Roosevelt project, Ethan displayed an essential role in the reinstallation of the main machinery room access cuts. Ethan consistently provided first time quality, passing all non-destructive tests with no rejects, saving the project both money on rework and time on their schedule. Presenting our next category, Shop 38 Machine, Marine Machinery Superintendent, Mr. Steve Morgan. Okay, presenting for the category of Trades, Crafts, Mechanical, Non-Supervisory, WG5 and below. Inside Machinist, Shop 31, Toolmaker, Shop 31, 
outside machinists, shop 38. Pipe fitters, shop 56. Piping insulators, shop 57. Pipe fitters, shop 99. Crane inspector, test, quality assurance, and training of code 720, and crane maintenance of code 730. Nominees, Brett Blocknell, shop 38. Alan Harold, shop 57. Dakota McIntosh, shop 56. Christopher Obong, shop 31. <laughs> and the winner is Brett Blocknell, shop 38. Throughout the year, Brett has increased the efficiency and effectiveness of Shop 38 special tooling area. This area transitioned to a new location with an inventory of over 5,000 individual items and kits. Brett leads repairing and overhauling of special tools and expanded his responsibility to minor property custodian for 700 tools and maintaining 850 calibrated items. Brett has successfully accomplished inventories on schedule without lost tooling. This is a testament to his dedication to the program and process. Whether Brett is completing work within his area of responsibility or supporting with asset management, he represents Shop 38 in the best light and puts his focus in the best customer support. Presenting our next category, Dive Locker Repair Parts Petty Officer, uh, David Lindsay and Code 964-975, Shipwright and Dismantle Trade Dismantle Trade Superintendent, Mr. Dan Topness. Good afternoon. We're excited to present the award for the Trades and Crafts Electrical Non-Supervisory WG5 and below. We have electronics technicians, electricians, temporary services electricians, members of calibration, and mechanics from code 720 and 730. And the nominees are Alberto Mopano, Shop 51, and Terry Winslow, Shop 06M. And the winner is Terry Winslow. <laughs> Terry has been an indispensable part of the electrical install crew for the entirety of the year 2023. Buildings all across the shipyard have had machine needs when it comes to installation requests, and Terry has been at the forefront of the overwhelming majority of them. Terry has had an integral part in the planning, work execution, and installations, and in organizational communication throughout the year. He's already shown exceptional leadership qualities. He's an incredible asset to Shop 06, as well as PSNS as a whole. And we are thankful for all of his efforts and the work that he does every day. Presenting our next category, Diver First Class ND1, Joshua Emberson, and Code 701, Deputy Director, Lifting and Handling Department, Mr. Kelvin Perez. Good afternoon. Presenting the award for Trades, Craft Services, Non-Supervisory, WG05 and below, Central Tools from Shop 06, Shipwrights, Shop 64, Composite Plastic fabric Fabricators, Shop 64, Fabric Workers, Shop 64, Dismantlers, Shop 75, Painters, Shop 71, Blasters, Shop 71, Tile Setters, Shop 71, Temporary Services, Shop 99, Production Engineer and Facilities, Code 980, Crane Operators, Code 740, and Divers, Code 760. And the nominees are Zachary Cantrell, Shop 75, and Zachary Webb, 
Shop 71. And the winner is Zachary Cantrell. Hey. Zachary's dedication and commitment to this command and federal service is unrivaled. He is consistently ready to help when called upon and commonly goes above and beyond to assist his colleagues at all levels to understand paperwork, processes, and workflow. Through his intentional actions of teaching, spreading knowledge, and sharing ideas, his engagement has proven to save time and cost while maintaining compliance with hazardous material controls. Zachary not only provides support to the deck plate, but he has supported numerous supervisors and employees with process improvements that have led to an increase in safety and a reduction of man hours on site. These actions have also saved the command potential fines and extra effort for potential spills. Okay, presenting our next category, Master Diver James O'Halleck and Shop 26 Welder Superintendent, Mr. Steve Dybert. Good afternoon. It is our honor to prevent Trade Supervisor Foreman, person acting in a supervisory capacity, leading WG employees in accomplishing production work in or out of the shop or project environment blue-collar, and physical science technician first-line supervisors. And the nominees are Norman Asiaga, Shop 64. Kyle Ari, Shop 11. Jason Bays, Shop 56. Marie Daly, Shop 57. Jared Gingri, Shop 64. Ralph Goldizen, Shop 67. Lester Gregera, Shop 75. John Hallengren, Shop 99. Stephen Keeley, Shop 31. Michelle Keith, Shop 26. Joel Miller, Code 740. Gregory Otley, Shop 38. Daryl Schneider, Shop 17. And Barry Stevens, Shop 71. Okay, so there's two winners in this category. And the first winner is Michelle Keith. The ability of our workforce to execute welding operations on U.S. Navy ships begins with qualifications. Michelle Keith's leadership as the Shop 26 supervisor in the conventional weld school has helped the command maintain the high standards our Navy expects and depends on. She holds herself, the weld school instructors, and the students accountable by setting high quality and safety standards. Code 138's audit of our welder performance qualification program in 2023 discovered zero significant findings. Michelle helped onboard 69 new employees in 2023. Approximately 36% of them completed qualifications under the allotted time, saving over 9,100 man hours, resulting in over $668,000 in overall savings. Michelle has been instrumental in Shop 26's success in welder qualifications and development. Thanks, Michelle. And my apologies, there's a typo on my uh, cheat sheet. So I'm, I'm a, sorry, but there's only one winner. Thanks, Michelle. I know. <laughs> 
Presenting our next category, USS Pennsylvania Deputy Project Superintendent, Mr. Jeremy Feldbush. Thank you, Mr. Arnell, XO. I'm honored to announce the Employee of the Year nominees for Managerial Supervisor, Trades and Projects, Second Level or Above. This category will have two winners and includes all levels of non-engineering management and supervision or those second level supervisors, general foreman, zone manager, assistant project superintendent, nuclear director, non-nuclear director, cell manager, assistant product line manager, who provide direction to trade supervisors performing production work with or without direct reports. Will the following nominees please join Captain on stage when I say your name? Mark Akers, Code 101. Randy Avery, Code 740. Steve Bystrom, Code 720. Robert Kramer, Code 312. Austin Cunningham, Shop 84. Shane Eddy, Shop 71. Corey Flateau, Code 350. Chris Hardy, Shop 17. Kenneth Hill, Code 300 in. Kyler Moore, Code 123. Michelle Ploss, Shop 11. Nicole Savage, Shop 31. Darren Smeltzer, Code 760. Gregory Stanick, Code 105.3. Michael Tanner, Code 730. Brian Watson, Shop 38. And Daniel Wocheck, Code 392. And the first employee of the year in this category is Darren Smeltzer, Code 760. When mitigating a seismic disaster became the shipyard priority, Darren led his team through an extraordinary effort. He managed undefined requirements, shifted priorities, and coordinated with seven other commands to meet the need. The Navy's three-star commander of Naval Air Forces called off the shipyard dive locker in a Bravo Zulu message for its four-day turnaround repair of a carrier in Singapore. Darren's a proven leader who has earned the trust of his subordinates and managers, uniformed and civilian, and is well-deserving of Employee of the Year. And the second Employee of the Year in this category is Michael Tanner. Whenever a crane suffers an outage or breakdown, Mike leads his team with a quick and efficient response to diagnose problems and return the crane to service. In 2023, Mike undertook the challenge to complete the complex service for Portal Crane 84. He was deliberate and persistent in understanding every problem and worked continuously until the crane was headed back to production. Mike was heavily involved in developing metrics and gathering data to improve crane maintenance scheduling. Mike's outstanding leadership is exhibited in the cranes he returns to the shipyard, in the people he develops, and the processes he improves on a regular basis. Okay, presenting our next category, Code 760 Boat Engineer, Lieutenant Commander Andrew Rowley, 
and Code 2309, Head Nuclear Engineer, Mr. Nick Lukaroth. We are honored to present the award for Engineering or Professional Waterfront Support, including engineers, environmental specialists, health physicists, and chemists involved in directly supporting waterfront projects. And the nominees are Brett Anderson, Code 120T, Brian Ballard, Code 260, Nate Burton, Code 2310, Kincaid Cook, Code 2340, Michael Krogan, Code 121, Kavika Franco, Code 270, Whitney Kiefer, Code 2320, David Klein, Code 250, Nicole Larez, Code 138, Andrew Perkins, Code 242, Daniel Schaefer, Code 290, Russell Smith, Code 2370, and Roscoe Tillman, Code 105.2. And the winner is Russell Smith. Russell is a member of the elite group of highly competent civil and mechanical engineers and has proven himself to be the absolute expert when it comes to understanding and applying seismic ground motions to naval vessels. Russell developed the nonlinear response history analysis technique which has become the required methodology by NAVC 04 and 08 for determining submarine stability, damage and demand load development for dock setting design. Russell's knowledge and skills were essential for advancing NAVC's understanding of seismic events and the risk they pose. Presenting our next category, USS Pennsylvania Assistant Project Engineering Planning Manager, Lieutenant Kelly Waterman, and Code 2380 Nuclear Facilities and Waste Engineering Division Head, Ms. Karen Kaufman. Good afternoon. We have the honor to present the category of Engineering or Professional Planning or Indirect Support for degreed engineers, engineers in training, or project engineers, including environmental specialists, health physicists, chemists, metallurgists, facilities engineers, and crane engineers involved in planning or indirect support of ship availabilities. There will be two winners for this award. And the nominees are George Bernard, Code 138, Damon Burchell, Code 290, Daniel Kennard, Code 105.2, Hold down a minute. Zechariah Cook, code 2312. Casey Faber, code 106.2. Brian Ham, code 2310. Drew Laspada, code 710. James Malin, code 2305. Amanda McDowell, code 250. Jonathan Miller, code 2340. Shauna Mayotte, code 2380. Elton Nakamichi, code 2320. Jeffrey Noyes, code 2370. Patrick O'Callaghan, code 260. Christopher Stewart, code 270. Reagan Whiteley, 
code 105.86, and Ryan Witte, code 134. And there are two winners in this category. I'll read the first one, and you'll read the second one. Okay, George Bernard. George Bernard has been working the shipyard for less than three years and has quickly become Code 138.2 branch lead for titanium welding, cold spray procedure reviews, shaft and rudder welding, contractor welding procedure reviews, and sys weld computer modeling of weldments. George's work ethic and passion for knowledge has led him to excel as an advocate for all aspects of welding, especially new and emerging technologies such as cold spray. George has sought out many different training and development opportunities with various subject matter experts in the cold spray industry, leading to his efforts in developing corporate UIPI and local cold spray procedures. George worked closely with the trades in his area of responsibility, supporting Shop 31 with shaft welding with IPI updates, and Shop 26 with developing a pressure hull heat study to eliminate required backside welding work. Whether it is helping to improve the Code 138 new employee handbook, or developing a training class and mock-up to save valuable time during the development of weld procedures, George always displays great initiative and dedication to the command. Thank you, George, for your commitment to excellence, and congratulations. And the second winner for this category is Drew Lispada. Drew Laspada has demonstrated exceptional technical excellence and ability as a professional engineer throughout 2023. Drew was tasked with complex engineering evaluation for a complex system on the design of a new portal crane that is planned for future critical lifts. While performing his review, Drew identified several issues with the contractor's design and technical performance of the new portal crane. Because of Drew's in-depth and thorough analysis, the NAVC procurement team was justified in concluding that the original design was inadequate. Those concerns were quickly elevated and the contractor reevaluated their design, potentially saving the command countless labor hours and funding to correct the deficiencies in addition to diluting the assets during maintenance periods. Thank you for your efforts, Drew, and congratulations. Presenting our next category, Code 240 Chief Engineer, Mr. Jason Holstrom. It is my honor to present nominees and employees of the year for the engineering and technical non-degreed category. Individuals in this category are mechanical engineering technicians, electrical engineering technicians, naval architect technician, general engineering technician, nuclear engineering technician, or industrial engineering technician. The nominees are Harold Arbogast, code 105.4, Wayne Boer, code 127, Jeffrey Colescott, code 246. John DeFevers, code 714. Kirk Dunn, code 244. Michael Harrell, code 121. William Hernandez Jr., code 210. Ray James, Code 138. Thomas Jappert, Code 242. Bien Juliano, Code 2305. 
Stuart Kirkham, code 127. Justin Mullins, code 2320. Joshua Newman, code 270. Robert Saseoka, code 105.6. Stephen Terry, code 250. The envelope, please. There are two winners in this category. The first employee of the year, Jeffrey Colescott. Jeff is the go-to expert on carrier test planning and certification for team members. He has been invaluable in training and mentoring to bring the team to its current level of experience and proficiency. Jeff is an excellent team player who always makes time to assist his colleagues who need additional support. He has been key in fine-tuning new standards for large and small scope testing. By contributing his experience to a revision of standards and applying his scrutiny and judgment to make directions more concise, Jeff is setting up the team to cut test writing time in half for many recurring tests, saving up to hundreds of hours in test writing time for a planned incremental availability. His commitment to the team was demonstrated during the holiday closure where he aided a project test planning engineer to work a backlog and to stay ahead on issuing tests and preparing for the start of the availability, including test planning and complex main engine repairs. One of Jeff's greatest talents he contributes is helping newer project test planning engineers come up with respectable what-if scenarios, ensuring they have well-thought-out plans as well as contingencies. In planning for the future of the branch, Jeff's input is often sought out on how to keep the team healthy for years to come. The second employee of the year, Raymond James. Ray James has had an astounding career at PSNS and IMF, accumulating a wealth of skills, abilities, and sharing his knowledge and passion for welding with apprentices, helpers, and engineers. His contributions as a pipe instructor in the Nuclear Weld School and as a weld apprentice instructor will be one of his lasting legacies. Ray brought his passion to the classroom, teaching everything from the fine line of holding a molten puddle of metal while defying the laws of physics and gravity to trade theory, print reading, and orientation education for more than 350 welders and 1,500 helpers eager to hone their skills. When Ray isn't educating, his main job in Code 138 is to oversee the Nuclear Weld School. In order to support the nuclear welding program in 2023, Ray reviewed over 300 new qualifications and performed 49 surveillances of the Nuclear Weld School. This past year, Ray's Nuclear Weld School Qualification Program was audited with zero findings. The people he has educated have gone beyond their initial trade, and the keels were laid for their careers, where today they are embedded in numerous shops and codes as mechanics, work leads, supervisors, general foremen, and upper management. A ship's strength can be directly correlated to the strength of its keel, and Ray has easily helped lay the keel of over 500 careers at PSNS and IMF. Presenting our next category, Code 340, Shipyard Docking Officer, Lieutenant Ivan Reyes, and Code 2310, Reactor Engineering Division Head, Mr. Scott Gordon. Good afternoon. We have the honor of presenting the award for Engineering Managerial and Supervision. This category includes all levels of engineering engineering technical management and supervision, and program managers. The amazing nominees are Will Barney, Code 121, Troy Coughlin, Code 105.7, Carl Dennis, Code 250, Jonathan Dumay, Code 2310, 
Martin Furnish, code 290. Jason LaPlante, code 2312. Brian Lemos Gonsalves, code 710. Dan Lund, code 133. Paul Muskie, code 105.2. Don Parker, code 120C. Eric Pregnell, code 1210. Corey Roberts, code 2370. Ann Rogie, code 127. Joel Shepard, code 2340. The last no nominee is Jen Shoblum, code 244S. And the envelope, please. There'll be two winners for this one. Jonathan Dume. In 2023, Jonathan Dume led the Code 2310 Reactor Engineering Division's effluent collection branch to successful adjustment of dry docking plans and modifying radiological drawings to mitigate continuously evolving concerns related to dry dock seismic vulnerabilities. Through JD's steady leadership and guidance, his team was able to meet the need of each project and prevent additional delays. Jay-Z also planned for the command's first-of-a-kind DMD for an on-track execution in 2025 that will significantly improve capacity and flexibility to meet the needs of the Navy with more readily available dry docks. In addition to his technical work, JD devised and refined a leadership structure within 2310 and leads the personnel development team and has established employee focus groups. Hoorah. And the second winner is Joel Shepard, code 2340. As the nuclear assistant chief test engineer, Joel Shepard directly contributed to the successful delivery of two aircraft carriers to the fleet after very difficult and technically challenging reactor plant deficiencies. During the availability, Joel identified a potential event in which he quickly developed a repair plan under scrutiny of Navy commanders, naval reactors, and senior Pentagon staff. His leadership, dedication, and personal sacrifice of extensive work hours led to the successful execution on a never-before-performed repair in the reactor department. Following availability, Joel supported another availability in which he re another reactor plant repair was urgently needed that involved the entire department of hundreds of sailors establishing system lineups and maintaining plant conditions. Working through difficulties, Joel's dedication and commitment to the Navy executed another successful repair, returning the ship to the fleet and executing the Navy's mission. Presenting our next category, Code 1200 Business and Strategic Planning Officer, Captain Mark Shuckman, and NAVC-04 Seismic Mitigation Director, Mr. Charlie Combs. Good afternoon. We are honored to present the award for the category of Technical or Professional Non-Engineering Non-Supervisory. This category includes Environmental Specialist, health physicists, attorneys, planners and estimators, schedulers, production controllers, computer specialists, radiological control technicians, and trade instructors. There are two winners for this category. The nominees include Carmen Adele, code 105.3. Joseph Barney, code 139. Sheila Borelli, Code 2308. Melissa Brown, Shop 06. Nathan Chin, Code 
code 105.11. Shelley Germain, code 105.3. Richard Gregory, code 132. Karina Grunval, code 2350. Justin Latsuka, code 105.3. Autumn McMurray, code 109.2. Christopher Mills, code 105.4. Christopher Moore, code 106.2. Charles Osborne, shop 11. Wilfredo Rivas, code 109.1. .1. Morgan Schumann, Code 105.5. Gregory Slayton, Code 138. Kevin Slegel, Code 105.8. Ashley Snell, Code 109.3. Timothy Trail, Code 220. We have a few more. Bradley Weir, Code 106.3. Dylan Wilder, code 109.4. Jennifer Woodard, code 300N. And finally, Thomas Zellers, code 132. And the first winner is Sheila Borelli. Sheila Borelli is an electrical estimator within 2308 of the Nuclear Engineering Planning Department. Sheila's expertise in the electrical trade has contributed greatly to timely completion of estimates. Sheila embodies PSNS's leadership principles, which is demonstrated by her voluntarily stepping up in as a supervisor for three months, where she mentored subordinates, worked with their peers to implement changes to, in the code, and worked closely with electrical trades to ensure estimates were accurate. Sheila's focus and dedication to planning products ensured that project planning completion rates stayed above the curve, despite backlogs from other groups. Sheila also volunteered much of her valuable time to train and develop others. She worked with many of the trades estimators and trained them in AIM, SPET, and other estimator duties. Sheila also volunteered over 20 hours of STEM outreach at various local schools, reflecting her commitment to her profession and inspiring young minds. Sheila is more than an estimator. She's a role model for leadership, dedication, and innovation. Great job and congratulations, Sheila. And the second winner is Christopher Moore. Chris Moore is a highly experienced and capable safety professional at PSNS. Chris has worked extensively in the mishap investigation and reporting program, most recently leading a team in the command to adopt and implement a new mishap reporting system. As a safety specialist, Chris has performed numerous mishap investigations across many different programs at the command. Chris has always maintained a professional and technical approach to the many investigations he performs, earning the praise from many trade safety advocates. Always a team player and an advocate for the command, Chris recently volunteered to support Swing Shift by taking on a new role as the Swing Shift ESH manager. Chris's expertise and leadership was put to the test on September 28th when a broken flush valve flooded the third floor of Building 850A and the subsequent floors below. Chris acted quickly, blocking off all affected areas to ensure people would not enter an unsafe environment, in addition to quickly making proper notifications so that hazards could be properly isolated and mitigated. Great job, Chris. Presenting our next category, Code 500 Supply and Logistics Officer Captain Michael Chrisman and Code 100 TO Command Transformation Office, Mr. Walt Chanel. <laughs> 
Good afternoon. It's our pleasure this afternoon to now present the Vision or Innovation Award, which recognizes visionary employees with passion who develop new ideas and concepts by creating self-sustaining processes, leading new initiatives, and making significant contributions in areas such as innovation, mentoring, team building, safety, process improvement, energy conservation, and equal employment opportunity. And the nominees are Leslie Bowman, code 109.1, Matthew Broadbent, code 138, Christopher Doyle, code 2310, Janessa Fairheart, code 2330, Brandon Fox, code 2340, Anthony Harmon, code 312, Doyle Malecki, code 106.3, Kevin McKern, code 260. Tori Adi, shop 11. Michael Richardson, code 760. Joseph Trent, code 1120. And Seth Zwiefelhofer, code 900B. And the envelope, please. Christopher Doyle. Chris Doyle is an innovative thinker who in 2023 helped develop and implement improvements to containment seals, which are used for shipboard work, reducing the execution time by approximately 41 hours across three waterfront projects. Additionally, Mr. Doyle has been involved with the shipyard's development of additive manufacturing capabilities and has been integral in the procurement of equipment needed to further the use of this technology at the command. Chris regularly demonstrates strategic vision, innovative thinking, and effective use of current industrial technology to improve safety, and reduce risk, schedule, and the cost of work. Presenting our next category, Code 500 Deputy Director of Supply and Logistics, Ms. Ryan Joyce. Good afternoon. It's my honor to present the Excellence in Safety Award today, employee category. This award honors an employee who made a significant safety difference in their shop, code, or project. This individual demonstrates a positive and proactive safety perspective, sets an example for others, and promptly reports unsafe working conditions. They may have suggested an innovative process and or developed or recommended a new safety device. They also promote safe working habits, motivate others to work safely, routinely correct safety problems, attend scheduled safety training, and participates in their shop or code safety committee. The nominees are Calvin Baines, Shop 17, Ronald Braga, Shop 31, Robert Johnston, Shop 75, Paul Niddle, Shop 11, Matthew Krieg, Shop 57, Laura Montgomery, Shop 26, and Rex Shepson, Code 740. And the winner is... 
Calvin Baines. Calvin Baines was the lead mechanic responsible for the removal and movement of large complex structures during decommissioning of Dry Dock 4 refueling complex and the maintenance of energized systems at Dry Dock 1. Calvin's leadership and focus on safety was instrumental in identifying and mitigating significant hazards to the crews working with him on these jobs. Hazards included high energy, sharp edges, falling objects, and material under stress that could have catastrophic results if cut the wrong way. Calvin mitigated each of those frequent and thorough communications, ensuring correct training and qualifications, adjusting supports for unstable material, sequencing object removals, and use of lanyards. Thank you, Calvin, for being a leader who plans and executes with personnel safety in mind. Presenting our next category, Code 130 Director, Quality Assurance Office, Mr. Mark Angel. Take that back. I'm sorry. One off. Presenting our next category, Code 900B Production Resource Manager, Mr. Jason Beller. Good afternoon. It's my distinct honor to uh, present the category for Excellence and Safety Manager. This category can be defined as a manager who, through their actions and contributions to safety, exceeds normal duty responsibilities demonstrates leadership that significantly and effectively contributes to their accident prevention in their area of responsibility, promotes workplace safety as a priority, values their organization, suggests a new creative idea or process that improves safety and serves as a role model to share those ideas with other organizations or departments, identifies, reports, or corrects a safety hazard that would directly affect the health and welfare of the workers. The nominees are Sean Allison, Shop 75. Arthur Eckert, Shop 38. Kathleen Forney, Shop 11. Timothy Moon, Shop 06. And last but not least, Edward Sweeney, Code 730. And the winner is Timothy Moon. Tim Moon is an outstanding safety advocate and employee. He is a knowledgeable resource who always responds to questions and shares his knowledge with others. Mr. Moon not only meets the requirements of his position, but has also built relationships where shop personnel support and respect him. Tim makes a point to sit down with every single new hire and introduce them to safety. He's also actively coaching employees throughout our hands-on safety observation program. Tim's commitment to safety exemplifies the highest ideals for our shipyard safety managers. Presenting our next category, Code 760 Command Diving Officer, Lieutenant Commander Michael Beautyman, and Code 105 Executive Director of Rail Obstacle Controls, Mr. Tony Curdy. We are honored to present the Culture of Excellence Award. Culture of Excellence is a Department of the Navy strategy that empowers employees to achieve mission excellence by fostering psychological, physical, and emotional resilience, promoting organizational trust and transparency, equitable processes, policies, and accessibility, and ensuring inclusion and belonging for every employee of our diverse workforce at all stages of their career. This award recognizes an individual for their efforts that are over and above their normal job requirements to create a work environment where our command's most important assets, our people, feel valued for their contributions and where destructive behaviors such as harassment and discrimination are stopped and prevented. And the nominees are Tyler Goodburn, Shop 06, Monica Hunt, Shop 75, Ashley Jackson, Code 1183, 
Quentin John, Shop 17. Viliamu Kuaea, Code 100 TO. Chadman Lucero, Shop 38. Master Diver James O'Halleck, Code 760. And Stephen Ownmice, Code 105.3. And the winner is Master Chief Navy Diver James O'Halleck. Master Chief Navy Diver and Master Diver MDV Jim O'Halleck is a remarkable leader, manager, and technician who has driven excellence at the Bangor Dive Locker. All of his eligible junior sailors advanced to Petty Officer, and in 2023, his sailors achieved 68 unique diving qualifications including the designation of five air diving supervisors, the pinnacle qualification of Navy diving. His initiative enabled the complete rewrite of the operational risk management lifting and handling administrative procedure, massively reducing the administrative burden to our divers while enhancing their safety. He is a stellar ambassador of the Navy to our shared community by organizing wildly popular diving and tank equipment displays at Seafair and Fleet Week, whaling days, STEM events, and more. He is more than deserving employee of the year for culture of excellence. Presenting our next category, really this time, Code 130 Director, Quality Assurance Office, Mr. Mark Angel. Okay, I'm honored to present the award for Outstanding Volunteer Services and Compassion. It's to recognize individuals for outstanding community service work that represents our command guiding principles. This award recognizes <clears throat> excuse me, individual factors in going above and beyond and caring for people in need, providing individual efforts and contributions of time, talents, energy, and organizations. This includes work in civic, community, and, and other humanitarian excuse me, <clears throat> activities without pay or compensation, offering care, support, providing medical assistance in emergency, volunteering or participating in social welfare programs, professional studies or religious, fraternal, youth or school programs. And the winners are, we have two of them, uh, Joseph Bilyeu, Shop 26. Is Joseph out there? Huh? Huh? Yeah, there's two. Okay. And then the other, the, the other one is Jennifer Farley, Code 701. Okay. Oh, is this? Oh. Joe Bilyeu contributes numerous hours, seemingly as endless amounts of energy, and generous financial contributions to multiple nonprofit community outreach programs in and around Kitsap County such as the Veterans of Foreign, War, Foreign Affairs Writers Group, National Home and Auxiliary, the Kitsap Rescue Mission, the American Legion, and the Kitsap Humane Society. In 2023, Joe and his Honor Guard unit traveled 521 miles to honor nine fallen veterans. For, for Memorial Day, the Honor Guard placed 1,400 graveside flags at Sunset Lane Memorial Park with similar, similar contributions honoring the veterans for Fourth of July, POWMI Day, and Veterans Day. Joe helped supply children with backpacks full of school supplies and during the holidays delivered food baskets to families in need. VFW Post 184 Commander Joe Wright shared, Joe has volunteered countless hours, participated in many events, coordinated youth essays and teacher of the year programs for the last three years. He's planned award banquets, presented awards and graded numerous essays. Joe has and always will be a great asset to our organization. Joe's efforts and actions epitomize the command's guiding principles and easily qualify him for this prestigious award.
Jennifer Farley. Jennifer Farley was in her office when there was a knock at the door informing her that something was wrong with an employee. Jennifer acted quickly without hesitation, immediately tapped the employee on the shoulder and asked if he was okay or needed assistance. When she got no response from him, she began to massage his neck and wake him and call emergency personnel. She stayed on the phone while providing information to the emergency team. During those short 20 minutes, Jennifer's actions probably saved his life. Her background on the waterfront and emergency actions were superb and timely. Jennifer's compassion and caring of others enabled her to quickly assess the situation and make critical decisions, and it was phenomenal. We receive annual refresher training on active shooter, SHARP, and other important programs. However, in an office environment, we take granted emergency actions that there are others who know what to do. Thankfully, Jennifer was there to take action. Okay, here to present our final category of the afternoon, Code 2300, Nuclear Engineering and Planning Manager, Mr. Mark Harrington. So before I jump into the final category, I just want to take a moment to, and give my personal thanks to all the nominees today, to your families, and to the peers that came to support you and uh, recognize your accomplishments. You know, what, what the U.S. Navy does uh, to maintain order in the world on a daily basis, in my opinion, is unmatched by any other organization in the world. And what each one of you do every day is vitally important to that mission. And so, again, thank you. It's also my honor to uh, um, announce the category for Valor. And the purpose of this uh, recognition is to, for an individual or group of individuals who have displayed extraordinary courage by performing life-saving endeavors or rescue attempts or defending public, public property. Acts of value, valor may occur on, on or off the job, and to be considered for the Valor Award, a nominee must have been at personal risk. Is there an envelope? We will recognize uh, two recipients for the uh, Valor Award today. The first one is Stacy Mouser. Stacy Mauser sprang into action when she was alerted to a woman who was hysterical, bleeding, and crying for help. Her actions result in the rescue of two victims who were being held in a dangerous situation. It is likely that if no one had been around to help, at least one of the victims would have died. Stacy brings honor to our command through her valorous actions. Our second recipient today is Joseph Puckett. Joe Puckett was at a birthday party at Anatai Beach on the Puget Sound. One individual who had never kayaked before was excited to try. The individual is not an experienced swimmer and was unaware of the dangers of the cold water, strong currents, and ferry wakes. The host provided the kayaker with a life jacket and a lesson in the water. As light started to fade, a ferry approached. Friends on shore called the kayaker in. The ferry's wake upset the kayak and tipped the kayak into the water. Joe did not hesitate. With no regard for his own personal safety, he swam roughly 40 yards to the strong current to help the kayaker. Joe swam with the kayaker and the boat until additional help arrived. We are certain that Joe's quick thinking, selflessness, and brave actions prevented the incident from escalating and the individual from potentially being dragged away by the current in the dark. I would like to ask all of our 2023 Junior Sailor and Sailor of the Year, Commander's Excellence in Safety and Employee of the Year, please stand at this time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our employees and sailors of the year for 2023 one final deserving round of applause. I would also like to recognize the hardest job of this ceremony, which is our presenters who had to read all of those names. Can we give them a round of applause as well? <laughs> The second hardest job, playing the role of the assistant to the CEO, Ms. Kendra Weber. Good job. And EXO, this is the first time I've had a tag team partner doing this. I think that went pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> However, I will say that when the CEO is correcting you from the audience, you got to take a step back. EXO, I introduced you as commander. Please help me recognize Captain Select. Thank you, CEO. <laughs> On behalf of, oh, at the conclusion of the ceremony, I would ask that all of our nominees and winners return to the stage. We'll do some group photos. On behalf of Captain Crinklaw and the Incentive Awards Committee, we extend our appreciation to all who took the time and made the effort to nominate these amazing folks. Our special thanks to the families of our nominees. We appreciate you sharing your loved ones as we continue to support the greatest Navy of the world. Thank you for attending the ceremony this afternoon. This concludes our ceremony. Be safe and have a wonderful day.